If you would like to learn how to build a camper van like this yourself, then please check out my other YouTube videos. So if you guys have found these videos helpful, you can help me out in a big way by picking up a copy of my first ever album that my brother and I recorded in Nashville late last year. Any proceeds will go to future recording projects as well as taking the van on tour and hopefully promoting it. I'll leave a link in the description and talk a little bit more about it at the end of this video. So first things first, we're going to install our split charge relay. This will allow us to charge our leisure battery whilst the vehicle is running. So what happens when our vehicle is running, the engine is running, our alternator will be generating electricity and it will send that electricity to our vehicle's, so our van's battery, the starter battery. And it will charge up that battery and as we're running along, it will just make sure that it's topped up uh, and you know, make sure it has plenty of power. So what the split charge system will do is literally split that charging system that the alternator operates. So instead of just charging your vehicle's battery, we'll then be able to charge our leisure battery as well. Now there's a few different systems that you can get. Um, this Sergeant EC160 that we're going to install does have a split charge relay built in. But the trouble with that one is, and with the cheaper versions of split charge relays, is that you have to switch it on and off manually. So the tendency there is to switch it on as you're about to drive off, then forget to switch it off, and then your leisure battery will drain the power from your vehicle's battery, and you'll go, get up the next day to go and drive off, and you'll find out that your battery's flat. So the advantage of one of these, which is a voltage sensitive relay, is that it will automatically switch itself on and off. I don't want to bore you to tears with this, but I'm very quickly going to tell you how uh, the 12 volt batteries work when they're charging, just so you have a better understanding of it. So a 12 volt battery, when it's fully charged, will read about 12.7 or 12.8 volts. It won't read at 12 volts. One that's 50% charged will read about 12.4, and one that has zero charge will actually read at 12 volts or even lower. And if it reads lower than that, then it's pretty dire and it's always probably time to throw the battery away. So there is a slight difference when the battery is actually charging though. So when it's actually receiving charge, the voltage will spike way beyond 12 volts and it will most likely hit something like 14 point something volts uh, when it's charging. So our voltage sensitive relay will kick in at 13.3 volts. So when the battery is charging, that voltage spikes, this will automatically detect when it's gone over and above 13.3 volts and it will split the charge, so not only is the alternator charging our van's battery, but it will also then start charging our leisure battery as well and topping the both of them up to make sure they're full. The cool thing is, is when you turn the engine off, the voltage will then drop again and it will come back down towards sort of 12.6, 12.7, 12.8 volts. Um, this voltage sensitive relay will then switch off at 12.65 volts, so then it will just isolate the van's battery so basically then our leisure battery won't consume any of the van's battery and cause it to run flat just before you go ahead and buy your split charge system just double check with the seller that it's the correct one for your vehicle the reason i say that is the really modern vw like t6s have a smart alternator in them and these split charge systems will not work with them but if you have a little bit of an older van then these voltage sensitive relays will definitely work. I mean, this will work for most vehicles, but definitely check with, your, with the seller before you go ahead and purchase one. So you might be asking yourself, why can't we just take power from the van starter battery? A starter battery is very good at sending out a really high amount of power for a short space of time to help the vehicle start. And a leisure battery is very good at sending out sort of a low amount of power, but over a long period of time. So the two batteries work in very different ways and that's why we install the leisure battery separately. Just a very quick tip, I would advise buying the leisure battery sort of towards the last minute of your build when you're doing these second fixings. Now the reason being is that your battery will lose charge even though it's not being used. Just being sat around it will lose charge, especially in the colder weather and then you could run the risk of actually ruining your battery without even meaning to because these vans do take bloody ages to build. So here we have my vans. Fucking 
hell? <laughs> Here we have our van starter battery. Now unusually in this van, the starter battery is actually at the back of the van. Yours will most likely be under your bonnet at the front and you will therefore have to run your split charge wires from the front of your vehicle to wherever your leisure battery is. So you might have to actually run it underneath the dashboard of your van or something like that. In which case, if you are wiring anything through the bonnet of your van, it's important that you put some conduit over those wires to prevent it rubbing on anything or getting too hot and melting the insulation around the wires. So you can use some cable ties just to make sure that it's held into place properly and it's not gonna go anywhere. So the first thing we wanna do is we want to release our negative cable here, which is currently grounding out on the van's chassis. So you probably can't quite see it here, but it's bolted to the van shatty. Shatty. <laughs> what we're gonna need to do is release this lug here using the appropriate spanner or wrench. And it's important to note that in any electrical circuit, electricity will always seek out a ground point. Um, it basically won't flow through unless it has somewhere to ground. That's a good thing to remember with every circuit that we're working on that it needs a grounding point, otherwise no electricity is gonna flow through. So this is why it's going to make it safe for us to work on the electrics because the electricity coming from this van's battery is going to have nowhere to ground out once we've released this cable. So get your appropriate spanner or wrench and we're going to go ahead and untighten this bolt on the side. Whilst you're doing this, it's very important that your spanner or wrench, mine's probably a little too short for this to happen, but you definitely don't want it to touch your negative terminal and the positive terminal at the same time. Otherwise, the electricity will arch across the battery and it will do nasty things. So one thing you can do to prevent this is you could wrap it with electrical tape, so the insulating tape, you could wrap one end with it to prevent this from happening. Some of them come with rubber handles so that doesn't happen. So just go ahead now, it's safe to touch this with the wrench and we're just gonna release it. Okay, and then once you've got it loose enough, you can pull it out of the way. So I'm just gonna pull it out of the way from the wire. You might see a few little sparks, but that's fine. It's not gonna electrocute you. Okay, I'm just gonna pull it over there to one side. You can also go ahead and release your positive lug as well, which we're gonna do to make it easier for us to um, put our split charge relay system on there. So it's really important when you're releasing the lug on your positive terminal, that your, again, your wrench or your spanner doesn't come into contact with the negative terminal and that it doesn't come into contact with any of the metal on the van. If it does this, it will ground out onto the vehicle and your circuit will run through your wrench or your spanner. This one's quite loose already. So we can just pull it out of the way. And I can touch that with my hand, that's fine. You're not gonna get electrocuted from it. Okay, so just pull that to one side. Just show this very basic wiring diagram just to give you a bit more confidence in what we're doing. Um, so I'd highly recommend buying a split charge system as one big package. They'll sell them with the correct uh, cable size, with the correct fuse rating, they'll have this, the actual split charge relay included itself and all the lugs, basically everything you need all in one package. So it's basically just a case of just putting it together. Um, these companies are also really helpful. If you have any questions or get stuck, you can give them a ring and they should be able to sort you out. So we're gonna start off at our starter battery at the positive terminal. We're gonna take our cable out of here and we're gonna head into an inline fuse. It's very important that this fuse is gonna be as close to the positive terminal as possible. Then we're gonna take another cable out of the other side of the fuse. We're gonna end up in our relay, which is gonna have a ground. So we're gonna take the uh, cable back out of the relay into our next inline fuse, which again is gonna be as close to the positive terminal, this time on our leisure battery, or they've called it an aux battery in this. And then there's gonna be a ground coming off our leisure battery onto the chassis of the van. This one on the relay itself will also head onto the chassis of the van as well. So you're probably looking at your battery terminals right now, and you're probably thinking, how the hell would I connect anything to this? So just to demystify this before we move on, I'm gonna show you. So you can buy these sort of clamps. Um, I think the actual term is called battery posts. And what you would basically do is you would unbolt it from here. You'd push it all the way down to the base of your battery terminal and then you just bolt it down and that will secure this in place. Then once that's secured in place, you can take the end of your cable, which will probably have a lug attached to it, and this is what a lug looks like. Okay, so your cable will most likely be inside there. 
that will go over the top of the threads and then we'll simply take the corresponding bolt and we bolt it down. So another thing to bear in mind as well is that you can attach multiple wires to your battery by this method. So we could have one coming in from our split charge system here, a wire coming through there, and then we could have another positive wire coming from our solar panel for instance. So that's fine, you can have more than one and you just simply bolt them all down together. So the first thing we want to do to install our split charge system is we need to mount our fuse holders. So this is what our fuse holders look like, they're just a plastic holder. They've got a clip on them here to open them up. And as you can see there's two mounting points, one there and one there. Our inline fuse will just sit here between the two threads, like so. And then our cable will be running into this lug here. And our lug will sit on that thread and just bolt them down to make good contact and then you can close this off and it will clip like so. Okay so we're going to go ahead and install our fuse holders. It might be a good idea at this point to replace the cover on your battery so that you don't come into contact with it. You can get these little plastic caps you can put on the ends of the terminals to make it safer to work around. We're going to mount our fuse holder as close to the positive on our starter battery as we possibly can. So my positive is just down here. So I'm going to place it around here and you also need to make sure you allow enough room for any cabling to curve around any corners. I'm going to use a drill bit to drill a pilot hole first of all. Just get a little bit of the way in. And then I'm going to actually thread this screw through using a screwdriver. And then once this one's in place, we can then go ahead and do the other screw and then our fuse holder is then mounted. Cool. So it might be a good idea at this point to put your leisure battery in place if it isn't already. This way you can then gauge where your fuse holder can ideally be so that it's as close to the positive terminal as possible. So go ahead and mount your second fuse holder into place as close to that positive terminal as you can. So next up we're going to go ahead and install our relay. I'm going to place mine here, it's going to be a good mounting point on this real arch box. But yeah, you can go ahead and you can place this nearer to the leisure battery or the starter battery, it doesn't matter too much. There's a couple of screws provided to mount this. There's just two mounting points on this particular relay. So I'm going to go ahead and same as before, I'm actually going to unscrew this a little bit later. But I'm installing this now because we're going to need to measure how long our cables need to be just make sure that you've allowed enough room for the cables to come in and out of your relay. Just one note on where to install your relay. There is going to be a ground cable coming out of the relay. So just make sure you have that somewhere where you can find access to the chassis of the vehicle. So just one other thing that I'm going to do then. I need one of my cables to come through here to my inline fuse. So I'm going to take a flat bit and I'm going to make a hole and then I'm going to fill that hole and put the grommet through there. If you need to create any access points, you can go ahead and do this by using a flat bit or a hole saw piece. If you are creating a hole anywhere inside your panels, just make sure that it has enough room for your lugs to come in and out. So, now that we have our fuse holders and our relay in place, we can go ahead and get some measurements for our cables. And to work out what size we need to cut it to, we can use a piece of twine or a piece of string, whatever you've got around, and you can sort of send it on its path that it will take, and then you can work out what length you need to cut it to. I'm gonna start this one, our first cable from our positive terminal here, and I'll run it up this way into our fuse holder, roughly about there. Now that I've done that, I can see I need to cut it to round about there, but go and cut that with a pair of scissors and put it to one side and mark out which cable that is. And then you can go around and do this for the other side of your fuse to your relay, from the other side of your relay to our second fuse holder, and then out of the other fuse holder to your leisure battery. So just a quick tip, you might want to put your string or twine on a piece of paper like this and just label each one so you don't get confused as to which one is which. Get rid of the banana skin. <laughs> Now that we have the measurements for our cables, we can go ahead and cut them. And we've got some red and some black cable. So we're going to be running all of our positive cables at the moment. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this one first. You're going to need a proper cable cutter. This one was made by CK. I can only really recommend the proper tools for the job. This was about £19 for one of these. 
but what it will do is it will give you a really clean cut and it will ensure that you'll get through these copper strands and the insulation without any problems. So we just simply place it in there like that and just cut across the insulation and look how clean that cut is. What we can do now then is take each of our strands of twine or string, we can place them alongside our positive cable that we're using until you get to the end. Then using your cable cutters, you can then go ahead and cut the cable to that size. Just a nice square cut would be great. And place that onto our piece of paper there so we know which one is which. So go ahead and do this for all of your cables. Okay folks, next we want to go ahead and we want to add our lugs onto the end of our battery cables and we're also going to add some heat shrink here and that's going to protect and insulate our cables. I've been provided with a set of three different lugs in this package. So some of them fit onto the battery posts. This slightly smaller one here will fit inside our relay. This smallest one here is the one that we use to bolt down the cable onto our fuse holders. So just make sure you're using the correct ones. So first of all, when it comes to putting these lugs on, we need to strip this insulation from the very end of the cable. You can get some proper wire strippers to do this job, which I don't really have. I've just got these wire cutters. These have got wire strippers and they correspond to the size of your cable and then you can get a pretty accurate cut. I'm actually going to make a small incision and I'm going to be making this about a centimetre down from the end of my cable. Do this nice and square as well. I'm going to apply a little pressure and I'm just going to rotate my cutters. Okay, but we want to make sure that we do not go all the way through into any of the copper strands. Oh, there we go. So at this point, even if you're using proper wire strippers, it's a really good idea just to go around and just check that all these copper strands are still intact. Now, if some of them have been removed, um, effectively then those copper strands aren't going to be able to carry any of the load because they won't be making any contact with the lug and therefore electricity won't be flowing through them. Instead all of our electricity is going to be flowing through fewer strands and therefore it's almost effectively like using a smaller cable and it won't be able to deal with the load as well or as intended and so therefore it could overheat and then it could cause you problems. If you have managed to take some of the strands off, you're gonna to have to cut that end off and just start again. So to connect our lugs onto our battery cable on the copper wire here, we're going to need to crimp them on. And crimping is basically uh, a way of squeezing these lugs onto the copper strands so that it holds onto them and that's how you make your connection. But for these battery cables, you'll need a heavy duty crimping tool um, they're fairly expensive, so you might want to borrow one if this is just a one-off. The method we're going to be using to do our crimping job is this Draper hammer tool. Essentially what you're going to do is you're going to take your lug, you're going to place it inside here. Once that's held in place, you can see there's a pointed part of this tool which is going to sit in the central part of this sort of cylindrical area of the lug and then you take the part of your cable with the copper strands exposed and you will basically feed the copper strands into the lug. The insulation of the cable, we want it to butt up against our lug like that. You can then take a hammer, put some force down on the top there and that's going to create our crimp. You want to give it a pretty good whack, but you can see here where it's made our little indent. You can just check by pulling on the lug here to see if it's held on nice and tight. You don't want to overdo it also, you don't want to absolutely go at it with a hammer, but you do need a strong connection. We can go ahead and put some heat shrink on it. I'm going to show you another method which I think is a little bit more accurate than that one. So with our lug in place as we had done before, we just place this in the vise. The reason why I like using this is because it's a little bit slower. You can check that you're making a good connection and you're going to want a fairly strong amount of force on there so then you can release this off you can just check the connection and just pulling on it 
So great, there we have it. There's the two methods. Now we can go and heat shrink these. Right, so hopefully in your package, they've been kind enough to provide you with some heat shrink. This is what it looks like. We're gonna cut this one in half. And this will fit over your lug. And we're gonna place it over the top of that join between that insulation there and our lug. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a heat gun, like this, and we're just gonna apply our heat evenly around the edges and that will cause it to shrink and then it will insulate and protect the cable. And there we have it, we have one finished connection. So you can go ahead, make sure you heat shrink all of those connections. Don't touch that because it's probably hot. <laughs> so just to show you, that's what it looks like before we heat the heat shrink. And that's what it looks like after. All right, so now that we have our positive battery cables all cut out for our split charge relay system, I'm gonna go ahead and create the negative cable. So again, using a piece of twine or string, you can go from your negative terminal on your leisure battery, and you're going to need to find a grounding point. Now our grounding point is going to basically be anywhere where we can reach the chassis of the van itself. So what we're gonna be doing essentially is taking the lug from our negative battery cable and we're going to place it in a bolt and this bolt is going to be going through the floor of our van so the chassis of the van and then we bolt it down to the van and that's going to give it its grounding point so it's really important that we do that to complete our circuit I don't have a lot of space here in my leisure battery compartment I'm going to squeeze it down here so we're going to need to remove a little bit of the floor to get to the metal of the chassis of the van it's very important that all the grounding points um, are just bare metal uh, I mean, it has to make really good contact with the grounding point for it to ground out properly. So we'll show you how that's done. So again, using a piece of string or twine, I'm going to go from my negative terminal here. And I'll be running this along the side. So essentially now we're just going to go ahead and follow the exact same process that we used with our positive cables here to make our negative ones. So just... Ta-da! Negative cable sorted. Let's move on. So we can now move on to the next stage of wiring this all up. First of all, we need to go and put one of these battery posts onto our battery itself. So I'm gonna whack this on the positive terminal here. Wriggle that on as best I can. So there should be a P on one and then on the other. Let's tell you which one's the positive and negative. We're just gonna tighten up the nut that's on the end just to make sure we've got a nice tight fit. Cool, so that's nice and tight on there, that's not going anywhere. You can do your uh, negative terminal as well at the same time. So we'll take off the nut here on top of this post. So first we want to do then is we want to take the cable from the positive terminal on our leisure battery and hook it up to our fuse here. So uh, f first of all I'm just going to take that nut, place it over our lug. Then we're going to want to get one of our fuses. I'll just pop it in place. So then we'll just place that over the top and then we'll put the nut over it. Okay. There we have it. Now we can tighten both of these down. Okay. Happy days. Next you want to take a cable from our inline fuse. I want to hook this up to the relay. Now there's a sign on the back that tells you which one is the AUX battery, so that's your leisure battery, and one that will go to your starter battery. So just hook them up accordingly. Uh, to feed the cables through, you're gonna to need to remove a little bit of this plastic casing, which you can see we've done here. There's a few little channels that are kind of half cut, and uh, you could just take something like a sharp knife and just take those away to allow your cables to come through accordingly. So next up then, we'll go from our inline fuse, and don't forget these holes are sized accordingly to fit into whichever part you're leading into. So now we've got our inline fuse hooked up 
we want to go ahead and hook the other end of that cable to the one that says aux battery Okay, once that's done, we can go ahead and place our cable on the part that says starter battery now. Place that, tighten that down. You can then also push your earth cable, your ground cable, out through another slot. And then you can go ahead and you can put your backing plate back on and that should just clip into place. We can go ahead and reinstall this in place. So mine was on the wheel arch cover here, so I'm gonna just go ahead and pop that back on. I'm gonna go ahead and put the second screw in as well. With our relay now fixed into place, we can take that cable that's running out and we can put it onto our inline fuse and the next cable that will be coming off of here will be the one that goes from the inline fuse into the starter battery. So that's all tightened down, replace the cover. So now we need to connect this last wire here up to the positive terminal here on our starter battery. There is a bolt. We also want to ensure that the original cables that were heading there that belong to the vehicle itself sit in place too. I'm just going to bolt that into place and then a nut that I can put in on the other side. Next up I am going to go ahead and put that onto the positive terminal here. Just tighten that on. Great, so I need to find a space now to run my ground to. It doesn't necessarily have to be within the leisure battery compartment, but uh, our mine is on this occasion. You just need to make sure there's just a reasonable amount of room to actually fit that bolt through and make sure that we've got good contact with the metal of the van. So I'm just going to take a pencil here and just sort of mark out roughly where it needs to be. And initially what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this hole saw piece here with a pilot drill bit that's designed to drill into metal. This is going to guide our hole saw piece and the hole saw piece is going to take out the uh, a nice circular section of the floor so that we have room to get the lug in and the cable. Just go ahead and make sure that there's nothing underneath your van right now that uh, you don't want to drill into. So we've just made the hole in the floor a bit bigger to allow our cable to fit through. Now I'm just going to make this hole through the chassis of the van a bit bigger so that I can actually fit the bolt through it. Next up we need to remove the paint that's on the chassis of the van. This is so that we can have good contact with this lug coming off of our negative cable. So to do that you could use like a wire brush or a scourer and just remove that paint any way possible just so that you reveal the bare metal. You could also use a very coarse piece of sandpaper. So once you see the bare metal you can stop and then just clean up the area. I'm going to now attach the ground or earth cable from the negative terminal on our leisure battery into the chassis of the van. Now I've already attached it to the chassis of the van so if you haven't done that you can go ahead and do so. Right so we're almost there now, we need to create an earthing point for our split charge relay. There's a black cable coming off of it and the insulation has already been stripped back on this one so it's all ready to go and we just crimp a terminal on that will look like this, it will be a ring terminal and I'm going to place that on this bolt here. So that's going to be ground out onto the vehicle chassis via this bolt that is already exists. Um, if you don't have one that already exists, then of course you can go ahead and create one just like we did for our ground lead that comes off of our leisure battery into the chassis of the van. Either or you need to go ahead and crimp this ring terminal onto the end of your earth wire. You can twist the threads if it makes it easier to feed it through, don't forget. Great, so there we have it. I'm going to go ahead and bolt that onto there. So. 
the last thing that we're going to need to do is reconnect the negative cable back onto our starter battery which I've now done and just test it. So to test it we're going to start the engine and we should see a light come on just here and that will tell us that the split charge system is working. So I'm going to go ahead and start the engine. So I'm pleased to say that the split charge system is now working and we found the problem with the charging system within the van itself and it turned out it, I had a faulty alternator. It wasn't giving enough charge out so whilst the engine was running I went ahead and checked the battery and it was only reading at about 12.4 volts or lower. So uh, we've gone ahead and put a new alternator in. If you have that same problem it's dead easy to do. There's just a few bolts to take out and a couple of wires on the back. You'll see for yourself. Just make sure that you tension the fan belt correctly as well. So one other thing that we need to do is we need to add some more protection to the positive cables that are coming off both the vehicle battery and our leisure battery. I'm going to add some electrical tape to this one, um, but I added some conduit to the, one, the vehicle battery, which is another thing that you could do. This is just because they obviously, if they get a break in before the fuse, that fuse is not going to... Uh, short the circuit so we just want to ensure that nothing's going to cut through this thanks for stopping by everybody please like and subscribe and check out our other content on all things camper as i mentioned before i've just recorded my first album we'll need all the help i can get so i'll leave you with an album preview for now and a link in the description if you'd like to pick up a copy There's all that you can You put their cold and harsh demeanor It'll soon come back around